All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechak, Wadash, and double honors unto the apostles. And know there's a great millstone and peace and blessings to all you Yahweh out there who pushing his word with all truth and sincerity. And as well as all you believers out there who believe in on the gospel. And this is the brother Kwa Rabai from the Great Millstone Houston camp. And uh, real briefly, I want to go into another lesson. Uh, I was sitting at the job earlier, you know, just kind of doing a little meditating. And uh, the topic of uh, being comforted, you know, came to mind. In which I was kind of considering uh, meditating on these things last night. You know, just talking to a brother last night, you know, in this morning. Just going over how the scriptures is our comfort, you know. And um, that's the first place we should go to when we are or when we do find ourselves in a low moment or a low point in this truth. You know, because that's another thing. As we come into this, um, you know, into the awakening of knowing we Israelites, especially, uh, you know, being those who serve the Lord and, and do the work. You know, we're going to have many ups and downs in the truth. Many times we got to make adjustments. It might be a, a year, a couple months, you you might be on point, feeling good in the spirit. And then a couple weeks and you, you might be feeling trash in the spirit. You know, but nevertheless, we hit the scriptures. What? When, when we feeling good. We on point, everything going well in the spirit, in the camp. But also the time to go to the scriptures as well is when things not going so well for us. <laughs> right. When times get a little hard, when things might not be going as well in the camp as as wanted as you you know may want it to but the thing is where to go for that comfort man to the scriptures you see and even in a whole as israelites this is, should be this should be our comfort that's what i was thinking about though even as a whole for us as israelites what's written should comfort us for example guess we're in this situation you know even for our people who not in the truth if they was to find out this truth, it's, it'll be like closure to their spirit, you know, closure to why we live in the way we do. You know, although we're special people, or talented people, or chosen people, the question would be, well, Lord, why are we in this situation? Well, look, we go to the scriptures for any so-called black, Hispanic and Native American. Go to these scriptures and you're going to find your comfort. You're going to find your closure, man. You go find what you need to hear. Look, people, in, even in the world, when they're going through tough times, <laughs> what they like to do, go open the Bible. So how much more us who understand what the Bible is actually talking about, who know the Most High Yahweh, who know our Lord Yahweh Shai, that, that, therefore, the word should strike us even more, man. Bring more light to us even more. And again, comfort don't just, I'm going to say this, comfort, I'm going to get into the scriptures. I got just probably a few, but comfort don't just come in somebody giving you a hug. <laughs> you see, comfort ain't just somebody rubbing your head, telling you it's going to be okay. No, comfort comes sometimes. We got to get corrected. We got to get rebuked. Because you know what? What's going to be the comforting part in that? We're going to be taught what to do now and what not to do, man. You see, comfort, sometimes correction and rebuke, it is comfort, comforting. Because without it, imagine what we could have been or what we could be doing. You know? Or even, you know, like I said, it, as an Israelite in the whole, you're trying to wonder why your situation so rough and tough. Well, go to the scriptures. Or even personally, when tough times come, revert back to the scriptures. This one we go get the comfort at, man. But let me get this first Talking a little, a little longer <clears throat> In the intro that I wanted to Let's start right here in First Maccabees This is the first one I thought about As I was considering um, This lesson Real quick straight to the point First Maccabees chapter 12 And verse 9 It says Therefore we also Albeit we need We need none of these things that we have the holy books of scriptures in our hands to comfort us. You see? So we don't need nothing else in this world to comfort us, man. Yeah, it could be a lot of, you know, coping mechanisms that one may go to. You know, you probably got to get away and go jog. Or, you know, we probably want to get some yayan or, you know, uh, uh, call, call a brother and, you know, 
try to get some feel good, you know, <laughs> you know, try to feel better in the spirit. But really, the first place we should go is to the Lord, man, to to the comforter, which is Yahweh Shai. But seeing he ain't here, what well, he left us a comforter, which is this truth in a whole, man. This is going to tell us everything we need to need to hear. Because, look, even when we do do get counsels from brother and go to brothers for a comfort, guess where they go come out of? Out the scriptures. You know? Let's read this again. First Maccabees 2 and 9, it says, Therefore we also, albeit we need none of these things, right? We don't need no other things to get us in the right spirit. Because you know what? No other things can get us in the right spirit. No other things going to show us the rights from the wrongs in this world. You know? No other things can purge us, purge the infirmities out of us, and and transform our mind into the way the lord wants us to act and be but the word can that's why we go to it go to it man no matter the situation it's it's look it's advice from genesis to revelation it including the apocrypha for every single uh situation man maybe a count uh, a precept in proverbs or sirach but that's why we go to the scriptures one more time i gotta read this first maccabees 2 and 9 therefore we also how be it, we need none of these things, but that we have the holy books of scripture in our hands to comfort us. You see, this is what we got to comfort us, man. Let me get uh, this in 2 Corinthians real quick. And I'm going to get a definition or two. And then, so this 2 Corinthians chapter 1, and I'm going to read the GNT or the NLT. The second Corinthians one in the NLT. Now check this out. So the header says, and I'm gonna start at verse. Yeah, I'm gonna start at verse three. Yeah, I'm gonna start at verse three. But the header says, the most high offers comfort to all. You see? The most high offers offers comfort to all. Now check out what it says. It says, Second Corinthians chapter one and verse three. And it NLT. It says, All praise to the Most High, the Father of our Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach. The Most High is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. It says, The source. So anything that we may go to to try to get comfort from, guess, guess where it comes from? <laughs> guess who the source of it? The Most High. You see? So anywhere we go to try to calm our nerves, to relax us, guess, guess who got to give us that? In the first place, no matter where a person go, it got to be the most high first and foremost. Right? Through him. Again, Yahweh Shai said he, we might have get that, he gave us a comforter. He ain't going to leave us comf uh, comfortless. Roughly paraphrasing. And again, a lot of people in this world, they can go to different things for comfort. You know, they might go buy something to make them feel better, you know? They say, you know, money, money make a couple people happy, you know, but they might go buy some or go on a vacation that may take their fancy. But again, when they come back from that or after they bought it or after they drunk it or whatever they done, guess what? You back to reality. That's why with the Lord. He tap, he goes straight to reality. <laughs> he make you deal with the situation right then and now, man. You know. Because look, going is better to just go through something. Right? Experience something and then come out of it than to be like the people in this world and act like it's never there. You know, it's not there. Because that's not true comfort. You're not dealing with the situation, you know? But let's let's continue on this. This is uh Second Corinthians chapter one and verse three in the NLT. It says, All praise to the most high, the father of our Lord Yahweh Shah Mashiach. The Most High is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. Verse 4. Verse 4. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. And look, even this, you got certain apostles, elders, brothers, and teachers. You know, we go through certain troubles. Hey, shit, I'm, <laughs> you know, I love how I see myself. But look, we go through these troubles. You know, brothers endure through them, overcome them, get that experience, come on the other side. Look, now they're able to give advice to other believers, other other members of the body who may need to hear it. So it says he comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. 
when they are troubled, we will be able to give the same comfort the Most High has given us, advice. You know, what to do, what, what, what some things you may need to work on. That's, again, comfort comes in many ways than just getting a hug and a rub on the head, man. Sometimes comfort could be getting cussed out, getting rebuked, being brought low. Because in that comfort, you we being taught the right way. What to do, what not to do. What's offensive, what not offensive. What's not offensive. Right? What you overstepping your boundaries in, which you may be all right in. See, comfort come in more ways than... than uh, uh, I, I love you. <laughs> it's gonna be okay. No, sometimes we we need to be told other things to open our eyes to see, you know, what we may need to deal with. Certain things we may need to deal with. Look, getting a person a pat on the back that don't solve the situation always, you know, because they could overlook what the Most High might be putting them through, and that's that's a that's why the Lord did put us around men. So if we may not see something in us, guess what? Another brother can pinpoint that. Another brother can call that out. Therefore, we're gonna have to make the change. And look, that's when we hit the scriptures to get the to get that the advice. I was getting advice and insight mixed up because I was about to say both. But that's when we hit the scriptures to get advice, insight. You know, go to go to brothers, so on and so forth. But all these things are needed when we're in a low point. Again, going back to the scriptures for comfort. Going back to see what we got to do. What's going to bring us out of this lower state? I'm thinking of Sirach chapter 2. We might have to get that. You know? Cleaving unto the Lord when we're here. Not going to nothing in the world. Not going to, your, you know, family in the world. Ask for advice. What should I do? Because they don't, they don't know. <laughs> they don't know. Your coworkers don't know. You see? Can't ask the people a question on Quora. Doc, Quora whatever it's Q-U-A-R-A. -A, where they ask questions. And you get an answer on what they're doing the truth. No, man. The Lord gave us a comforter. A comforter to help us through tough times, hard times, whatever a brother may be dealing with. Financial problems, you know, legal problems, uh, a family issues you may be going through, car problems, uh, shit, infirmities in the, in the body, you know, offenses you may cause with, within the body, certain things we may have to deal with. But again, where we go to get back on point and to get back on track. To clear our mind, we go to that, to the scriptures. We go to that comforter, man. Let's finish reading this in 2 Corinthians so we can move on. I might hit that Sirach too. But this is uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 5. It says, For the more we suffer for Mashiach, the more the Most High will shower us with his comfort through Mashiach. And I'm going to say this too. Suffering for you, how was a lot of things we suffer for, the Lord just chastising us, but some things we suffer for is self-inflicted, man. And I'm speaking to myself first and foremost, you know. We may be in a lower state because of some BS we done, right? Something we went off and did, right? But you know, it says um, suffering uh, for righteous sake. And also, hey, it don't feel good when you got to suffer for something you fucked up on. But guess what? It's still suffering. And, and whether it's a suffering the Lord just putting you through something and you've been on point and he just trying to test you like he did Job and Yahawashah, oh, well, we've been fucking up and the Lord making us suffer for our own mistakes. But guess what? It's still suffering. And then that suffering or this suffering, guess what we're going to need? A comforter. Somebody to comfort us. That's when we got to go to the scriptures. Man, the Lord got the answers. Yahawashim Yahawashah got the answers. And look, if we read the book ourselves, watch videos ourselves and don't get it, that's why we have brothers because they may have read something that they can relay on to us. They may have watched the video that they can relay on to us, man. But again, where is it coming from? The scriptures, the source of all comfort. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to get this in uh, Psalms real quick. But I'm going to read this again in 2 Corinthians 1. It says, For the more we suffer for Mashiach, the more the Most High will shower us with this comfort through Mashiach. But why though? If we suffer, what that's going to force us to do? Get back on point, man. When we suffer, that's going to force us to, now you, you look, it might be times you want to fast and, you know, you go home and your wife got some food cooking. You're like, ah, I'm going to probably do it tomorrow. <laughs> you put it off, right? Or uh, brother hit you up, you, you know, you was on your mind to fast and however something may happen. But look, comfort comes in. Now the Lord, he could force us, us going through those sufferings, whether it's self-inflicted or he just want to do something. Those sufferings force us to humble down, right? And 
in that humbling down, our comfort coming says right here, the more we suffer for Mashiach, the more the Most High will shower us with comfort through Mashiach. So as when the Lord stay, guess who go comfort us? Yahweh Shah, but that's cleaving unto him, man. Again, we may have to fast now in that lower state. Pray more, right? Read more. You know, those things going to uh, getting back acquainted with the Lord. Getting back in tune with the spirit of Yahweh Shah. I remember the other Tazapah said this, this a couple of years ago about how our spirit, and I'm paraphrasing what he said, but how our spirits got to be... Um, we got to always make sure our spirit is calibrated, man. Because we could be on point, you know, throughout some time in the truth. But then, look, you, 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 you might get a new job. Your schedule might change. Something may arise. This may come. Now, you, we always got to adjust. Adjust. Those same things you probably could have did when we, you know, wasn't officers might not be comely or convenient now that we may be officers. Just kind of throwing out things, you see? But we always got to adjust in the truth as we go to the next level. Guess what? Certain things can't go with us. And when we go through those low points, that's what the Lord may be trying to show us. Look, I want to take you here, but that old bullshit you was doing can't come. You see? But again, going through those low points force us. It's the point of the lesson. Force us to cleave to the most high. That might be the title. Going through low points force us to cleave to the most high. Let's get to rock two. Let's get to rock two. I'm going to read 6 in 1 Corinthians, then I'll get Sirach 2. So this 2 Corinthians 1 again in verse 6, it says, Even when we are weighed down with troubles, it is for your comfort and salvation. Let's go into comfort. Let's see what that means. We've been saying it this whole time. Let's go into the word comfort. This is G3874, parakalesis, parakalesis. It says, for comfort. And this is just on a Strong's definition. It says hortation. Let's look it up. Hortation. It says tending or aiming to exhort. Let's see what exhort mean, which is exhortation. It says exhorting. To incite by argument or urge strongly. So look, sometimes when we in lower points, brothers come to us in a comfort might be urging us to do this and stop doing that. Exhort us to look, like you may need to kind of chill on this and you may need to do this. See, <laughs> but comfort comes, I'm keep saying it, comfort comes in more ways than just a rub on the head and a hug. You know, mm, check this out. It says to give warnings or advice or make urgent appeals. And I mind you, this is a part of comfort. So us being warned is also comfort. Us being told about ourselves, that's also comfort. Because look, now you know. Now we know. Now the changes can be made. You see, now the changes can be made. Let's go back to comfort. The definition of it. In a blue letter. The next one says, Solace, which is comfort or consolation in a time of distress or sadness. Let's go to the outline biblical usage. It says comfort, which means calling near, summons, encourage, admonish. Let's see what admonish mean. Admonish. To act or action of admonishing, authoritative counsel or warning. Check this out. Reprimand. Reprimand. Let's see what reprimand mean. But again. A warning can be the comfort we need. A, a warning can be the, the the light bulb over the head that we may need, man. But reprimand, it says rebuke. <laughs> so see, look, these definitions are the definitions, the word that they gave. These are the definitions for the word comfort. But why would somebody be comforted in being reprimand, reprimanded or rebuked? Because a correction can come out of it. You see? Advice can come out of it. A clear mind can come out of it. Right? And that's pretty much it. Uh, another definition, it says to instruct. To instruct. Right? So going back to this verse, and we can move on. This 2 Corinthians 1 and 6. Even when we are weighed down with troubles, it is for your comfort and consolation. So sometimes it's for our correction. Not sometimes, it's always for our correction because every time we go through something, it's for a reason, man. 
whether we go see it at that moment or we have to pray to the Lord, continue hitting them scriptures to see why we went through it, man. A, a prayer and fasting could do miracles. You see? And it says, we are confident that you share in our sufferings. You are also sharing the comfort the most high give. Uh, let's get to rock too. I'm going to read it in the GNT. You know what? I'm going to read it in the KJV. And then I might go to the GNT. Because it's a certain way I like a verse in here. KJV. So this is a rock two and one in the KJV. It says, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord... With, it says, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation, right? So when we go through things, we shouldn't be caught off guard or like Apostle Peter said, thinking it not strange. We was already told ahead of times we was going to be tried in the truth. We was going to go through afflictions in the truth. Yeah, how wish I told us the servant ain't greater than the master. Look, we was told we was going to be humbled in the truth, embarrassed, so on and so forth. But it says, but set thy heart aright. And constantly endure. Just keep it pushing. <laughs> Just keep it pushing. Look, the sun will rise tomorrow. And then the next day, the sun will rise that day too. Look, and the comfort is still going to be here. The comfort is until he come back, man. And Lord willing, get us. But constantly endure. It says, set thou heart aright and constantly endure. And make not haste in the time of trouble, man. Mm. Make not haste in the time of trouble. And going to what I was talking about with a brother yesterday, making haste in the time of trouble. You know, we may be in a situation and, he, well, I got to, I got to, you know, make a call. Or I got to, you know, do this. No, no. Sometimes speaking to myself first and foremost, we don't need to do shit. We need to just shut up and sit down and chill. You see? And chill. Let the Lord handle, let the spirit work things out. That's another lesson that, you know, I was kind of meditating on. Um... To do is that the spirit is always right even when it's against us again the spirit is always on point even when it's against us at a certain point in time man it's always on point so therefore let the lord sort it out let the spirit deal we ain't got to force nothing man and that's what i'm realizing you know you know as we grow in this truth hey we're gonna level up in, in different understandings different levels but it says cleave unto him and depart not away and how you cleave? This the how do we cleave? The most high in the heavens. Your how will shine the heavens. We just can't go sit around them and talk to them. No, how we cleave unto them. We got a Bible right here that your how will tell us the same things out the Bible. Go read, man. Watch the lessons. You know? Hey, even even talking to brothers. Because they read and watch lessons. They the Lord's speaking through them too. That's how we cleave. Get advice. Cleave unto him and depart not away, right? Departing away is going to seek comfort from the world. It says that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. And whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. And that, that, that time being patient, again, that's doing the sufferings. And doing those sufferings to the point it don't feel good, we're going to seek for comfort. And our comfort should be the scriptures. As a matter of fact, King David said this. I'm going to read verse 5. It says, For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Man, those who keep pushing. You see who keep it pushing. Let me get this in Psalms too, because King David prophesied about it. On why he needed uh, a little comfort as well. This Psalms 23. And I'm going to start at 1. It says, The Lord Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, is my shepherd. I shall not want. Right. We don't we don't have look. Yahweh Shai said, I got bread for you, food for you that you ain't go hunger no more. I got water for you. You ain't go thirst no more. What is that? The scripture. So once we eat and drink this word, nothing else should satisfy us. Nothing else should make us feel better or feel good like this truth can, man. Bring us back to reality like this truth can. Because, again, people could seek out other coping me mechanisms like drinking so on and so forth but again once that died down you you still gotta deal with the you still gotta deal with the situation you know you can go on vacation do this and do that act like it's not that but you still gotta deal but w at least with the truth the, the law force you to have to deal with it the law forces to have to deal with it whether personally we gotta a be real with ourselves check ourselves the scriptures say examine ourselves but right when we hit these scriptures or when brothers talk to us that's the time we gonna have to deal when brothers come talk hey we got a deal you know 
But again, that goes into all um, what I'm speaking on. This is the true comfort. Things in this world could comfort a person for a moment, a time, a day, a week, a couple hours. But this truth is refreshing. It's a real comforter. You see, it's a real comforter, man, through whatever situation. But let me uh, wind it down. Let me read this in Psalms 23, what King David said. So Psalms 23 and 1, The Lord, Yahweh, Bashimi Yahweh Shah is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. It's the point. It says, yeah, th though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And that's us right here. Because and, and really, this America is talking about, you know, America. But, you know, we got brothers and sister out sisters outside of America. And shit, Esau made the world a valley of the shadow of death, likened unto this place. You know? But nevertheless, as we in this world, death on all sides, distractions on all sides, confusion on all sides, guess what King David going to say he needed? It says, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. This why. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. That's this truth, man. You see? The rod and staff, that's what should comfort us. Again, and what's the see the, the rod is likened unto correction. Even correction is comforting. Look at look at King David. Even when Nathan came, man, see, when Nathan came to him, I doubt and trust me, King David ain't feel good. But reading Psalms 51, I'm sure he was thankful for Nathan coming to him. He was comforted in that, man, because it brought him back to reality. It checked him a little bit. You see? And also, the hope, the hope that the Lord gave us of him being merciful, right? That's part of the staff, too. Or that's, you know, you know, like in a, you know, the rod and staff, but it's truth, man. Yeah, it's going, you know, the Lord going to have it at times to well. And it's like until he's giving us a hug and, and consoling us. But sometimes it's going to be the correction, correcting part that's going to comfort us, man. Let's read it again. Psalms 23 and 4. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me, man. See? I'm going to read 6. Nope, five. We're going to read it all. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And that's what we hope for. That's what we hope for, man. And that's why we go to the comforter. To keep these things in mind. Uh, like I've been hearing uh, brother say lately, keeping the main thing the main thing. And at times we always kind of got to be brought back. And recalibrate it or adjust in the spirit, man. It says, and I will dwell in the house of Yahweh by Hashim Yahweh forever. You see? But I got one more. I'm going to get that John 14, which Yahweh Shai said about the comfort and I end it. Something I was thinking about at the job. And like I said, I was talking to a bro too, you know? Um, But this John 14, you're straight to the point. In verse 16, it says... And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. Because when Yahweh Shah was on earth, guess who comforted the, comforted the disciples? Him. You see, when he was around, they felt okay. They felt safe. They knew what to do. They, they, you know, they had advice. They were told what not to do. But when Yahweh Shah, he was going to leave them, but he told them, look, I ain't going to leave y'all alone. I'm going to give y'all something else to take my place. Another comforter. It says, and that he may abide with you forever. And that's this word, man. It's going to tell us, verse 17, even the spirit of truth, that's the comforter. The comforter, which is the spirit of truth. It says, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it see of him not see the world. See, when people in this world go through tough times and hard times, they, they go to the world for comfort. Try to escape and get away and run from the situation. You know, but the Lord, like we read in Sirach, he said, Cleave unto him, we gotta face it. <laughs> we gotta we gotta face it. Right? Because again, facing the situation is far more purifying than leaving it. You see? 
that's the comfort, man. You know, look, again, working to get past it, so on and so forth. Then when you pass it, that's the experience. That's the experience. Oh, look, hey, a car just put in front of me. It's, it's a CMY1448. You know, call all y'all by Shemal Shah. But again, it, it, the Lord forced us. When he put us in situations to, to force us to, to come to him, man. That's the point. He forced us to have low points. So we come to him. I remember the elder Barack Obama. And I'm going to end it in the uh, New York camp. He said this a while back. But he said, um, we're going to have ups and downs in the truth. Times we feel the best. Sometimes we feel the worst. But he, he went into the thing. I don't know what it's called. But in a hospital, you know, when they got your heart, your heart rate going. It's going up and down, up and down. But he was he likened that unto what we experienced. He was like, yeah, in the truth, we're going to have ups, ups and downs. And if you don't, that means you flatlining. That means you dead. If the Lord ain't, that's what he said. Just, it was a lesson he did a couple years ago. But he said, if the Lord ain't putting you through, th through different things, then you flatlining, you dead. So it's better to have ups and downs in the truth, to have great moments and low points. And that's all it is, man. You know? But let's uh let's finish this. So this John 14 and 17. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it see of him not, neither know of him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be with you. Just the point. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you, man. So yeah, how was I here in 2024 AD ain't leave us comfortless? When tough times come, hey, go to the comforter. You see? The, yeah, the Lord give us, giving us insight on what to do And again, even the hope that we have As Israelites, knowing Look, this this place is not go, going forever That's a comfort in knowing that too Knowing your how shall I go come back eventually That's a comfort in knowing that too Knowing we ain't going to be in these chains of darkness Forever, that's a comfort in knowing that too You see? But I'm going to end it right there, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying and I want to give all praises, honor, and glory once again unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, and double honors unto the apostles. And that was a great millstone. And peace and blessings to all you walking out there who pushing this word with all truth and sincerity. And as well as all you believers out there who believe in the gospel. And keep fighting, keep pushing. We're almost out of here. And with that, Shalom.